In this video tutorial, we're going to block out the sections of our website. For example, the header, the logo, the sidebar, and some of those common areas. Now, you'll notice in this ending file I showed you earlier, I've got these guides set up where the individual columns and the gutters exist as well as a midpoint guide right here in the site. So we'll set up a few of these initial guides in our section, in of, rather in our website design, similarly. So first I'm just going to measure a few of these options so you can see how big these are. The header section is 150 pixels tall. Again, if you have a marquee, you can just select the info palette and quickly see how many pixels this is. Make sure that you have your palette in pixels. If it says like seven or three, it's probably because you're in inches. And to change that, you can click the drop down menu here, select panel options, and make sure that your ruler is set to pixels. Also, you can, if you would, if you rather, you can use the ruler tool, which is down here, and simply click and measure an area as well. And that will tell you the height right up there inside of pixels. So either method works. Um, so our header section, basically this area right here, is 150 pixels tall and it's 1,040 pixels wide. So a standard resolution is around 1024 by 768. And so my website is about a thousand pixels wide, which means the user won't have to scroll horizontally on, on common screen resolutions. So uh, the footer area down here, you can see down at the very bottom, it's about a hundred pixels tall. So again, this is this being a dynamic height, it really, um, the height of this content area is gonna change depending on the content and the sidebar may have more or less but I want a little bit of cushion down at the bottom of the website. Maybe I'll put some copyright notice or something in this area. And that's a hundred pixel area right there. You'll notice that the sidebar over here takes up one, two, three, four, five columns, while the content area of the site takes up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. So we'll set up a few guides in our design here to match that. All right, the first thing is, is to bring down a guide that's 150 pixels. So a quick easy way to do this is just get your marquee tool and like I did earlier, bring down a box that's 150 pixels tall. So let's see if I can get it just right. If I can't get it just right, I may need to free transform that. There we go, 150 and let go. I can then come up and grab a guide, pull it down and it, and it will snap right to the edge of that selection or that marquee. And you can see that shows that the Y position there of my guide is in fact 150. So I let go and that snaps that guide there. If your guides aren't snapping to your selection, make sure that you go to the view and then down to snap and then have snaps to guides turned on and selections document bounds. So make sure that your snapping is turned on and you have all of these highlighted, then it should snap right to it. Right, we're gonna do the same thing down at the very bottom, except this one will be 100 pixels. So I'll just pull up a little quick selection here at 100 pixels and pull down a guide and drop it right on there. So that bottom, the header and the footer guides are set. Now I want to pull a guide for the sidebar. Now it should be one, two, three, four, five columns. Now remember there's a gutter inside of here. And so if we go back and look at our ending um, option, let's come down here to the sidebar so you can see this. The columns end right there and then there's a 20 pixel um, space. So I actually want to put my guide right in the middle of the gutter. So I'm gonna come over here, five columns. So let's count those off again. We'll say one, two, three, four, five. And that guide I pull out needs to be right inside of that. It's really easy if we turn back on our grid. So I'll go view, show, and turn back on our grid. And that guide needs to go right in that middle line. So I can just pull out this guide and it will snap right to the edge of the guide, right at 940 pixels and I'll let go and snap that there. So you can see my sidebar will occupy these and the content will occupy these, except I think I skipped one. It should be one, two, three, four, five. So I've got that over one too far, so I need to pull that over in between these. And there we go, there's the sidebar, there's my content area, and uh, we're almost ready to go. The last two guides I'm going to add will just be the outer bounds of the website, so the right and left bounds of the website. I'm going to want guides. Again, if we look back at the ending PSD here, you'll see that the, the column is actually, there's, there's half of the gutter. So there's a 10 pixel space on the right side of the column for the entire web 
layout, which kind of gives it that nice equal grid look. So I want to make sure that my outer bound here for my guide is actually 10 pixels or one tick over from the, the outer column. And the exact same thing for the first column. We'll uh, pull out another guide and instead of sticking it right there, it's going to be 10 pixels past right there. So that's kind of the, the width of my site. We'll go now from guide to guide and I have my header and my footer section. Now that we have our guides in place, we can go ahead and start to add in some of these colors and some of the main blocks of the website. So I'm going to turn back on my color scheme layer here and I'm going to turn off the pixel grid there. So let's go up and say show grid. It's I've said that wrong. It's not the pixel grid. I always do that. It's called the grid. The pixel grid is something else. In fact, I might as well show you what the pixel grid is right now. Once you zoom past a certain percentage, I think it's around 500%, you'll get this, yep, it's 600%, notice right there. There's this little teeny tiny grid, which is every single pixel in my document. It puts this grid around. It's this light gray grid. And that is called the pixel grid. So if you don't want to see the pixel grid when you zoom in past 500%, you can go to the view down to show and turn off the pixel grid. I like to work with the pixel grid off, although occasionally it is handy to turn it on when you're zoomed in at a very large factor. All right, I'm gonna zoom back out here to 100%. You can just double click the zoom tool and it'll take you right to 100%. If you double click the hand tool again, it takes you to view one, uh, or it makes the viewport 100%. So you can see your entire document in your viewable area. So I'll double click to go back to 100% and I'm going to shrink down this menu over here to the right so I have a little bit more room. And let's create our background color. So I'm going to push I to get my, whoops, wrong key, I to get my eyedropper tool. Now here's another little tip. If you hover over these and click and hold down, you can see the keyboard shortcut is I for every single one of these options. So I was on the note tool last. So if I go to the move tool and press I, it actually takes me to the note tool because that was the last tool I had used or the ruler tool or whatever you last used. If you want to toggle between these, if I want to select the eyedropper tool, you press shift I or shift whatever the keyboard shortcut is. And you can see that toggles through all of the options there. So I can toggle back up to my eyedropper tool and select that color. Another easy way would just be come over to come over to my swatches because I added them all here and just select it from right here as well. All right, now I'm going to fill my background layer with that base color. That's going to be the base color for the, the entire background of my website. You can see back here is going to be this base color. So I'll come to the background and there's several different ways to fill inside of Photoshop. I, I like to mention several different ways of doing everything just in case you may know one way and you might pick up a tip about another way. Uh, one way, the easiest way is to use Alt or Option. So Option Backspace <clears throat> or the Delete key will fill with whatever your foreground color is set to and Command Backspace will fill with whatever the background color is, is set to. So that's a quick easy way. You can use the Paint Bucket tool as well. You can come into your tools select the paint bucket, come out here and click, and that will uh, fill with a color. Or you can come into the edit and go down to fill as well, and then choose foreground color or background color or any custom color. Hit OK, and that will fill as well. The keyboard shortcut for that is Shift F5. So a few different ways to fill a layer with a solid color. Once I have my background color filled in the entire area, I'm going to block out a few of the sections for the content and the sidebar and a few of those things like that. So let's jump back here to our ending file and we'll kind of look at a few of those sections. So I'm gonna hide the grid, keyboard shortcut there is command and then semicolon, we'll hide those guidelines. Or you can go to down to view show grid, turn that off. Again, holding down option and clicking on that layer icon turns off everything but that particular group or layer. And this is the main block that I wanna add into my Photoshop design. So I need to add this big giant white square and then I'll rough in my header section. I'll rough in the, the sidebar and the content areas. So back up here, let's grab a shape tool down here. So I'm just going to grab a shape tool and I'm going to select the fill color of white before I make this shape. So it's going to fill a big white block. And I'm just going to fill this around the entire content area. 
So we'll just drop in a big giant block there and uh, we zoom in there and you can kind of see how that lays out. It should snap right to the guides. That's why we place those guides there. So it easily snaps to that area. And I'll create another layer here and we'll get a slightly different color. I'm just kind of making these colors up. It really doesn't matter right now. They're not going to be used in the final design. And let's say I'll just do a different shade of gray here. And I'll make this next one the header section. Now I'm actually not sure how tall I want my header at this point. So I'll just rough in here a value maybe of 430 pixels. So we'll just drop that in right there. We can always adjust this in just a second. And we'll create a new layer and we'll do two more boxes for the each individual sidebar, rather the content in the sidebar. So let's change that color again. I'll just keep getting a little bit darker as I go. And we'll add this box for our content. Now here I'm running into a little bit of issue because I have my snapping turned on and it's snapping to this inner gutter, which I don't want, right? So I want this to snap to that shape right there. So after I put that in there, I can free transform that and probably pull it back and snap it right there. So command T to free transform, command enter to set that transformation. That looks good there. And it looks like I have the same issue over on this left side. So I need to free transform that and pull this back in. So it's just right on the columns and the same issue on my header rectangle. So I'll free transform this, pull that back a tick and this right side needs to be pulled back so that they're exactly equal with the columns. Okay, so that looks good. Zoom out a little bit. I'm going to close this properties panel down and I'll do the sidebar one next. So we'll create one more layer here and get our shape tool, get a little bit darker color and finally pull out this last shape. And it's, we're going to have to do the same thing here. So we'll snap it there and we'll free transform it and pull these in. So they snap to those bounds and commit that. Oops. All right. So now we have this roughly blocked in where we have our, let's turn back off this color scheme. We're going to have our logo area up here. We're going to have our header area up here and our content and our sidebar areas right here. So we've kind of got the same rough grid that we have right here. And uh, we can kind of compare these back and forth and see those. So now we have those sections blocked in. We'll start the work of creating this background. You can kind of see back here on the final design. If I turn these layers off, let me just hide a few of these layers. You can see it's kind of got this faded pattern back there that's used in the final design. We'll create that next and start to do some of the layout work on the designing of the individual elements.